Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Leadership Lean In. Uh, I am your host. My name is Chad Veach, and we are thrilled to have you with us today. Uh, I want to say thank you so much to everyone that's subscribed and uh, following us, whether you're listening on Spotify or Apple or YouTube. Thank you so much for your comments and sharing and posting. It means the world to myself and to our team, and I know you're getting the word out about leadership. You know, the whole goal and the whole point of this podcast is to do our best to get a little bit better. Improvement is our obsession. We want to get better. We want to grow. We want to learn. We want to understand how to be the best version of ourselves. And we believe that age-old line, if you get better, everybody gets better. When the leader gets better, it improves everything. So we are going to jump into some awesome content today. I have with us our Sissonine, <laughs> our Tanya Rad, our Erica the Boss Bosco. Yes. How are you feeling? I feel great. Uh, Thanks for having may me. Maybe not everyone knows this, but you just launched the East location. Yes. You are the leader of the East. Yes. Uh, the fearless leader. How are you feeling? It's. I feel great. It's been amazing. So Couple fun. Weeks in. I was um, actually texting somebody on the way here. I was like, it's kind of like um, when you have a baby and they send you home uh, from the <laughs> hospital, yeah. and you're like, are you? We're we're leaving now. Right. Um, like when you when we left launch day, we we're like, oh, there's another weekend coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And right. this is a, this is like our future, and this it was so amazing. It's like you're nervous, but then you're so excited, and yeah. you can't wait to see it grow. Well, congrats. It's like the only thing I can compare, can compare yeah. to. Yeah. Congrats. Yeah, you guys thank you. crushed the launch. Thank you. It looks amazing. I yeah. still haven't been, but uh, it looks amazing. And yeah. your team is they're incredible. Off the charts, incredible. Yes. Speaks so much of your leadership. Thank Erica you. is a leader of leaders. Thank you. And we're thrilled to have you here on the podcast. I have you come on the podcast because you're <laughs> like for me like a like just a, a safety blanket that I yeah. just know <laughs> if I stumble, if I get stuck, you can rescue me. And you have great insight. Um, I'm fresh off of, I just got back late last night. We got back from Cabo Wabo. Yes. We took a Sunday off, Julie and yeah. I, and got away. Devon Franklin, who we adore, preached all day Sunday. Yeah. And I got a tad bit sunburned. Okay. Tell the people what really, you got it, it, really sunburned. It would, a would, tad? It's so funny because I like massively applied. I majorly <laughs> applied. I just missed like, a few spots. Were you, like, okay, just, okay. Yeah, so just, that I, I know, were I you wearing a tank top when nope, you applied? Nope, nope. I just was not concerned about like here. under arm because this is and a weird I wasn't spot doing a lot body. of right yeah. here you got to get the full so coverage i'm very sensitive my boys were trying to cuddle this morning i was like I, guys i can't really cuddle you're like please don't touch yeah me please don't in cuddle my with me today. so i'm a little sensitive and my, <laughs> my skin and my ego are wounded today uh i want to jump in we're talking about today leaning into your influence love it Lean in, leadership, yeah. lean in, leaning into your influence, which I love the word influence. Okay. I think some people, it's really interesting. Um, I posted from last uh, leadership lean in, so one of the 18 questions was about platform and influence. And mm -hmm. basically the question was, if I have influence, but I don't have a platform, you know, kind of what do I do? Yes. Yeah. And my whole thought was that, man, if you have influence, you need to realize you have yes, a platform. That's your platform. That is your platform. Yeah. And I think so many people are mistaken that I need to be on this platform yeah. for it to go, you know, and really hit and do well. And I think that it, it's a scary thought there because then what we're doing is we're seeking out platforms. Exactly. And we're not improving our influence. Yeah. Um, I think influence is such a fascinating deal. Influence comes to the most unusual suspects. Mm -hmm. It comes in all shapes and sizes and all forms and all facets of society. Yeah. I'm fascinated with influence. Sometimes it comes from the top. Most of the time it comes from the middle, the middle. and every once in a while it comes from the bottom. But uh, when I talk about leading, uh, leadership, I am talking about influence. Mm -hmm. And I think most people don't understand that as a definition, leadership is is influence. Yeah. Leading people is influencing them to a lifestyle, to a decision-making process. Um, I'm leading them to health. I'm leading them to bad. Yeah. Yeah. To negativity. Growing up, my parents are always like, you're not hanging out with them. Why? Yeah. Because they're an influence. They're, influence. They're, they're, they're a leader in my life. And I think so often uh, growing up as a leader, you've got to choose your influences wisely. Yeah. One of the things about leadership 
I have to be aware of is I'm so impressionable. Mm. Like I'm so impressionable. I can watch something and be like, oh, we gotta do that. Yeah. I can see that. Oh my gosh, I gotta be. I gotta be like so. I can see an outfit. I gotta dress like that. Yeah. We're so impressionable, and I'm impressionable even by comments. If somebody wow. says something bad about somebody, if someone says something good about somebody, I am impressionable. So I have to be very careful who my influences are. Watch carefully who I put in front of me because I know how impressionable, I know how easily I can be influenced. Yeah. And it takes real strength. It takes years of developing who you are mm-hmm. to go like, that's what they think. I don't have to think that. Yeah. That's how they dress. I don't have to dress that way. That's how they talk. I don't need to talk like that. Mm-hmm. You have to really lean into your own influence to strengthen it and determine this is the type of leader I want to be. Right. This is the type of influence I want to be. So when I say that phrase, leadership is influence, what comes to mind? Like what what do you think about in the context of leaning into your own influence yeah. and just knowing that leadership is influence? Yes. What, what, what comes to mind? Well, I love that you even said uh, that you're impressionable. I think you have to know what you have to know that about yourself. You can't just assume I have this leadership gift. I'm going to do everything my way. Part yeah. of being imp- there's a good side of being impressionable in right. that you are teachable. Yeah. To an extent, there's the other side of being very impressionable where you you suddenly lose your sense of security and so you're yeah. just you you emulate exactly who you see. Right. Um so I think leaning into your influence as a leader is understanding who you are, developing the right. inside of you Get the core. so that, yeah, at your core, so that you can steward your influence wherever you're at. I love that thought of that your influence is your platform. Yeah. And I was even thinking, the like literally the other day I was thinking about what makes somebody successful. Mm. Um, and is it, is it writing a book? Is it having a massive following? What mm. is it? Like what mm. is success for somebody? Right. Yeah. Um, maybe it's off the the heels of you talking about significance and versus success. Yeah. Um, but just really thinking about uh, your influence is often greater than you. Yes. And so it really matters what you develop on the inside Man. so that you on the inside can outlast that influence in the long run. That's I think that's a huge thing that I have really learned in the yeah. last few years is your influence is always going to be greater than you. It's like Person. your vision's bigger than you. Your Man. dreams are bigger than you. So your inside has to be very um, rooted. Yeah. A deep, deep foundation of security so yeah. that you can outwork the influence that you didn't make for yourself that right. God gave you. Right. I had you know? three moments last week sitting down with people, talking with people where I was reminded of that, where it's like, you. I don't think, and it's a scary tension Yeah. because no one rolls out of bed going, man, I got influence. Totally. No one. No one ever thinks that about <laughs> themselves. No. And I am. I mean, I'm influential. Influential. No you. one thinks that. No. Right. Um, I just finished uh, Shoe Dog, Phil Knight's book. Oh, so good. good. Book. Yes. I love that book. Yes. And I think just reading through his story and hearing him talk about how human he was mm-hmm. and how sometimes he was still that kid that fumbled through insecurities yeah. and struggled with being around superstars. And he, people with great influence, most of the time, don't think they have great influence. No. And every once in a while, you have a moment where you go, oh, so that mistake could cost me at that level. Yeah. That comment, that mishandling, that whatever. I have more influence than I bargained for, than yeah. I realized. I think you have to lean into your influence because you have to be aware that what I say matters. Yeah. How I live affects other people. And if I don't, if I'm not really leaning into this, what happened? I think it's so tragic. People with influence can lose their influence by being negligent. Right. By being irresponsible. Not understanding, wow, I've got a big platform yeah. and I want to u- use this for the good. Yeah. I want to use this to help people. Yeah. And if I'm if I'm really irresponsible, the fastest way to lose influence, I've always felt this, is to not be careful and aware of your influence. Yeah. You just throw it down yeah. the drain. Well, and for somebody maybe who's listening that's saying I'm not... A- I, how do I figure out if I have influence? Yeah. Um, there's a there's also a tension of you don't want to take yourself too seriously, yeah. but there's there's a part of you that you have to be yeah confident enough to yeah. say, 
here's how I'm going to live my life in expectation of the influence I have or want to have right. in this sphere or in this place of my life right? Um, as well. So there's that, that, you know, there's always like that person that takes themselves way too seriously <laughs> yeah, and you yeah. like don't want to be that person, <laughs> like, but you also don't want to be the person that everyone can see yeah. what is on your life except for you. Right, right, That's right. This. So, so, so this guy, I, I post a video about, um, you know, platform and influence. Yeah. And um, and this guy comments and he, and he and he said something like he was kind of mad at the at the at the clip, and he was <laughs> saying basically, I know pastors of small churches in small rural areas that don't have a platform, but they're so great. And he's kind of coming at me like, is it all about influence and yeah. is it all about platform? And I th- I thought, wow, you 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 miss you missed what we were trying to say here. Mm-hmm. My dad pastored on an island in Washington, yeah, in a small town uh, of thirty thousand people, and had a great church and influenced so many families. Yeah, we we were in a naval air station uh, area and um, influenced so many military people and mm-hmm. so many. And I never looked at his life. I still to this day don't ever go, "Wow, he had a little bit of influence." He yeah. had a ton of influence. Yeah. and so I don't think I think we have to be careful and understand. <clears throat> I think sometimes we think influence is like massive. Yeah. And like this big, you could be a coach and have such crazy influence with the kids on your team. Oh, yeah. You could be a school teacher and the kids that are walking into your classroom and have such insane influence on three, five, eight kids. You could have influence in, I don't care what part of the country or world that you're in, if you have people that are in your wake and looking to you for leadership. Yeah. You've got crazy it, influence. Right and the only way to get more influence is to steward what influence you do have. Yeah. The only way to to have a greater impact is to be really faithful. It's that whole thought that the big time is not where you're going. The big time is where you're at. Yeah. The grass is not greener on the other side. The grass is greener where you water it. Yeah. And so I think it's such an important part of leadership to just go, I have influence. I'm taking what has been graced to me in a very serious manner. And I want to do the best of my ability to lead people yeah. to the to the place they can't get there without my investment into their life. That's I perfect. love this quote, trust is given, mistrust is earned. Wow. Trust is given. Because wow. ultimately, if you've got influence, People are saying, I trust you. Yes. I trust your life. Yeah. So you you you're given trust, but I'm telling you, you can you can earn mistrust so fast, so, so fast. quickly. It is so crazy. It could be a comment, it could be a moment of uh explosion of anger, it could be a mishandling of finances, it could be mishandling of of relationship. It doesn't matter. You can you can earn mm-hmm. your mistrust. And leaning into our influence basically is saying, I know I've been given trust, yeah, and I don't want to abuse that. That's so good. I do yeah. not want to to mishandle the trust. I'm trusted at my company. I'm trusted mm-hmm. in my sphere. I'm trusted in the East. I'm trusted at Zoe. I'm trusted wherever you're trusted, and you've got to realize you have the uh, you have the opportunity to even be trusted more. Yeah, man, with that fast, you can get trusted less. Yeah. What comes to mind when when I say that quote? What what, what pops in your head? Well, I love that you even just said right now, like you have the opportunity. Yeah. Influence is also an opportunity to be had. Yep. And if you're, if you don't lean into it and you're fearful yep. of it, you'll avoid it. Yep. And you'll, you'll lose trust that fast yep. because you don't want to accept it. So it's easier for you to live apart from it than to accept it. Right. And I can think of so many people, even as a kid, yeah. you know, you look up to um, athletes yeah. or celebrities or people, teachers in your life. It's almost like when you're in, like, I remember being in like fifth grade and I loved this teacher. I thought she was so cool. Yeah. And then I heard her cuss like after hours and I was like, oh Wait, gosh, like all of a yeah. sudden I was like, she, she cusses. And I yeah. was like such a, I was a kid. I was like very naive little girl. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I, it instantly changed who she was for me. Totally. And I think you, we never grow out of that. Yeah. And so, um, I, it's the opportunity you have to lean into your influence yeah. is the same opportunity you have to build that trust with people yep. over and over and over and double down on it. Yep. 
it's it's that's where it's at right it's, there where it's, you are it's to me the compound of consistency exactly when you are consistent that just compounds over time there's a great story wow. one time a few years ago this nba guy i won't mention his name but one of the nba guys that we're close to he was you know we're we're hanging out we were talking about uh judah and who is just the best yeah. and the most trusted. Yeah. Like Judah's this guy you get around, you're like, I could tell you all of my secrets and all of my sin and all of my issues and everything that's, because I can just tell that you're trustworthy. Yeah. And this guy said about Judah, he goes, I don't even know that guy, but I can just tell I can trust him. That's crazy. And I just thought, dude, there it is right there. That's the goal. People know, they just know. They just know. They know that guy's genuine. Yeah. That guy's authentic. That guy's trying to leverage. Yeah. That guy's out for his own. That guy is 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 a me monster. And so you, you trust is given. You give somebody this trust, mm -hmm. but you could that fast you can earn mistrust. Yeah. And the earning. And by the way, when you earn mistrust, it's a hard road of recovery back to trust. Yeah. It is a long time. Now you could do it, of course. We see it happen in, in relationships. You see it happen in marriages. Yeah. You see it happen all the time where it's like, hey, you broke trust here, but I'm going to give you another gonna chance. Rebuild. I love that. But it's like, well, I, I would rather just keep building yes. the trust that's been given to me and steward it well. That's why I think things like discernment, mm. things like discretion, things like self-control are wow. such a big deal. When we talk about leaning into our influence, We're what we're really talking about is leaning into our character. Yes. Because your character... It's like the whole thing, like your talent gets you to the platform, but your character is keeps what you keeps there. you there. Yeah, Ta Talent will, will attract people to try and trust you, but your character will keep yes. the trust. Um, I, 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 think it's, I think it's important, in, and I'll pivot to this, uh, and because when I'm investing and leaning into my influence, what I'm saying is I'm betting on me. It's one of the wow. This is one of the best things about leadership. I love that. Is that at the end of the day, you have to believe in yourself yeah. more than others do. Yes. You have to believe in your gifting. Mm -hmm. You have to believe in your talent yeah. you, it, that's from God. You have to believe in in your in your your dedication, your practice, and your discipline mm -hmm. that's going to, you know, like your work ethic yeah. that's going to deliver the vision that's in your heart. You've got to bet on you and knowing what you bring to the table. I think leaning into your influence is going like I'm leaning into the the people that God's given me influence. Yeah. with i'm leaning into my character and guess what else i'm leaning into i'm leaning into my grace yeah i'm leaning into what i'm really good at yeah and my craft i love anyone that is dedicated to improving and honing the skills of their craft yes unapologetically Un like, yeah, just, it's just like, who they are i think that's what's so inspiring about kobe and the aftermath of yes. his passing and that i think more people are going I was watching Jason Tatum the other day, and he's going on a tear right now, and he's wearing this purple band, you know, mm -hmm. on his on his uh, his arm, you know, to, to basically symbolize I love Kobe. I'm yeah. playing, kind of dedicating this year to Kobe. But he's on a tear, and I think what what he's doing is he's kind of tapping into that yep. Mamba mentality, that Kobe of going like, I know who I am. Yeah. I know I've got a skill set. And skill set matched with investing into who I yeah, am yeah. is going to be a massive explosion. Yeah. I think as leaders, you know you're in a good place. And I think this happens over time. Mm. I think you get around greatness and maybe it can can kind of inspire you or mess with you. I think you look at the next level and you go, I can never get there. Or you lean into your influence yeah. and you go, listen, at some point, all the greats who I look to they had to make a decision mm -hmm. where they bet on themselves. Yep. And they go, you know what? I'm glad they did it. I'm glad they have that. I'm glad they are where they are. But I feel like I'm supposed to, mm. for two reasons, for the people that I'm leading already and the people that I know I feel called to lead in the future. Wow. For the character that I know I, ha I bring to the table, not just skill set, I'm gonna bet on my calling and my gift and I'm going to step out and maybe two things. I love this. Um, w remember, once you decide, you divide. Yeah. Decision brings division. So once yeah. you bet on yourself, there's some people that are going like. Yeah. They can't handle it. Yeah. What, what, like, who do you think you are? Yeah. Like, aren't you, aren't you Mary and Joseph's kid? Like. Yeah. Can't do that. Because they wouldn't bet on themselves. They wouldn't bet on themselves. That it pushes to them. It, 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 well, it pushes it in. It's threatening. It's, yeah. The other thing about this is that success separates you. 
Mm -hmm. Success, once you are successful, it separates you from others. Mm. And the fight of success is to not let it separate you. Yeah, wow. I had to learn this the hard wow. way. And in context, in our little cul-de-sac, in our little world, the little bit of success that I had in terms of what my family or friends would see as uh -huh. success, yeah, I could feel it separating myself mm -hmm. from other people I grew up with or people that peers and colleagues. And a mistake I made in leadership was I allowed it wow. to separate. And now years later, I can recognize and go, oh, that was immature on my part. Yeah. Because it doesn't need to separate. Hmm. It doesn't, just because you're in a different sphere, a different space or different influence, doesn't mean it has to separate you. Yes. I think that's a mistake that, that I learned the hard way. But at the end of the day, I would still go back and bet on myself. Yeah, you have that, to that bet doesn't change. On your gift, you have to bet mm. on your calling. You can. I, I always think you can never live at the level that you're at right now. You have right. to live at the level of your calling. Yes. So right now, invest in your leadership. Right, right. now, lean into your influence. Y you should be, in my opinion, not leaning in the influence that you currently have. Right. You should be leaning in the influence that you have faith that one day you're going to step into. You'll reap the benefits of sowing into your character now yes. in your influence later. 100%. That, I think when people are in the midst of making that turn of saying, I'm going to bet on myself, yeah. it's an internal subconscious decision, yeah. and then it becomes an intentional decision. Totally. And it's like, we we always say right believing leads to right living 100%. and right behaving. And the more you believe in you and yeah. your influence, you'll naturally have less desire to do things yep. that knock you out of the game. 100%. When we got ready to move to LA to start the church, yeah. it almost felt like we became free agents in the church world. <laughs> Guys that I didn't, I would never forget this one <laughs> time. Really it's so <laughs> insane to me. Yeah. This guy calls me up. I, I don't know how he got my number. I heard you're planting in LA. X organization want to get behind you, want to give yeah. you 400 grand. I'm like, are we signing like, deals? What? Like, is this a shoe deal? Am I supposed to get an agent? Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, oh man, thanks so much. We're, we're good, I think. <laughs> you know, like, and we had, that was one of many opportunities to partner with this and be yeah. with that and start. And, and I just remember having this feeling. I remember sitting with Chris Hodges and processing all this stuff with the him. Best. And I remember telling him like, I feel called, like I think that we're just gonna do it. Mm -hmm. I think that we're supposed to just launch this. You know, we have pastors, yeah. we have a board, um, we have a we have a spiritual family, but I don't feel like I'm supposed to sign with XXX, you know. And um and I remember this smile came over him, like he just looked at me and he was like, I love that. Yeah. Cause at the end of the day, at some point he bet on himself. Yeah. And he was like, I'm gonna leave Colorado. And I'm going to go to Alabama and I'm going to start this thing. And I think part of leaning into your influence is understanding the unique grace that is on your life. Yeah. I love this line. Anyone can do what you do, but no one can replace who you are. Yeah. So it's not what you do that makes your influence great. It's who you are. Mm -hmm. I always hold on to Genesis 12 when God says to Abraham, I'll bless you. Mm -hmm. I'll make your name great. And third, and you will be a blessing. Mm -hmm. So where does it start? You're blessed. Wow. I'll make your name great. And you're, I'm going to cause you to bless be so many other people. Leaning into your influence is understanding I've got influence and it's not even for me. No, it's for others. It's not for my name. Yeah. It's not for my bank account. It's not right. for my following. I've got influence as a vehicle to do greater good for more people than I could on my own. Yeah. And that's it. That's it. That is the whole genesis and foundation of influence. That's it. The byproduct of influence and and being successful yeah. is going to be financially and whatever, whatever. your connections. Fill in the blank. But I even love, a few minutes ago, you even said like, I'm taking, even if I have two to five to seven to eight students, I'm going to have the influence there and then I'm going to have more influence. Yeah. It's for other people. That's it. It's just answering your what's already on your life. For yep. the sake of others. That's it. That's it. Uh, I'm going to take a break here. We're going to go to this month's top five. I should stop saying this month because we are at two yeah. a month. Two top fives a month. Let's go to this episode's top five. Check it out. 
All right, this month's top five, this episode's top five, we're talking about costly mistakes. I want to talk to you about mistakes that you can make as a leader that are going to cost a little bit more than most mistakes. Remember, some mistakes you make and you're like, ah, no one really noticed. Ah, it didn't cost me that big. Other mistakes you make are like, wow, that cost me more than I wanted to pay. Let me give you the first one. Number one, leave everything better than you found it. This is foundational. Just make it a value right now that everything that you interact with, every person you encounter, everywhere you go, you leave everything better than you found it. You found it in one condition, but after you were there, you left it. I mean, this is like going to a restaurant. I remember being a youth pastor. You know, we go to In-N-Out after youth. And we go in there, and I remember teaching our youth this principle. You know, we devour the place. You know, you get your animal style. You get your fries. You get your, you know, your shakes, all. The, and then, you know, we're leaving. I'd say, the, you know, to the youth, hey, 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 let's clean up and let's leave this in and out better than we found it. You know, that is true in every area of leadership. People's lives, when they're in your influence, they should be left better than you found them. They're a little bit better, a little bit kinder, be better deposit. That goes from restaurants to buildings to any space you rent to people's lives to your organization. Leave everything better than you found it. Second one is get into the details. In other words, what will cost you is not knowing the details that you oversee. I'll, I'll promise you this. The only thing that's biting you, the only thing that's hurting you from the backside is things that you didn't know about. And I was just with a very successful businessman the other day. I was asking him, what is the common denominator of successful CEOs? He said, in my opinion, successful CEOs, every one of them, they are in to the details of their organization. Anyone that I know obsesses over the details. Why? What's the age old saying? The devil is in the details. That's where he is. He can only mess with the details that you don't know about. So if you know about everything, and remember, this is a biblical principle as well. It says, shepherd the flock, know the state of their condition. So you should know every area of oversight that you oversee that is from God. Be a very diligent person to know the details. It will cost you massive if you don't. Number three, lack of honesty. Now, the problem here is half-truths, because half-truths are, to me, lies. So, so remember, honesty is always the very best policy. You got to be an honest, forthright person, and telling a half-truth never helped anyone. It will cost you so greatly if you're not forthright going like, this is where I'm at, this is the mistake I made, this is a financial blunder, whatever it is, you got to be honest. It's always, this is so true about leadership, it's always the right time to do the right thing, but guess what? It's always the right time to be honest. A lack of honesty will cost. It costs in relationships, it costs in marriages, it costs in organizations, and we don't want half, don't be someone that tells half-truths, just go ahead and tell all the truth up front. It will save us so much heartache, so much pain, so much morale, it will take us to the next level. Here's the fourth one, systems over assumptions. This is a big cost. If you assume everything's taken care of, you assume everything's done, you assume most things are just, yeah, everything's good. Well, no, I need a system to solve all of my assumptions. I need a system that tells me there's a checklist in place that tells me we've we've checked off, we've checked the videos, we've checked the, the stage, we've checked the mics, we've checked, because if I just assume all that stuff, but I don't have a system that checks all that stuff, those assumptions, you know, you can break down, assume, you know, this is a very PG podcast, guys, we would not go there, but break down, assume, and it's going to cost you big. So don't live off assumptions. I believe the best about everybody, but guess what? I want to know. I want to have a system that tells me we finish this by this time. We turn in this by this time. Our church runs off systems. Remember, I love this thought about systems. Your systems are perfectly designed to set up and deliver the results that you're currently getting. So if you don't like your results, 
you don't like your systems because your systems are perfectly designed to deliver the results that you're getting. So for better results, we got to develop better systems. Bad systems will cost you in a major, major way. Number five, make changes when you want to, not when you have to. It's always going to be so much better. It's always going to help you in the long run to make the changes when you should, when you could, not when you have to. It's too late when you have to. It already cost you. It cost you a blunder, cost you a relationship, cost you a mistake, cost you momentum. It'll cost you somewhere. Make the changes. No matter what the change is, no matter how hard it is, most leaders make this mistake. We make the changes when we have, oh, we have to change it. We, it's broken. It's, it needs to be fixed. It's because it's, it's, it's costing you. Make the change when you want to when you can see it, when you have foresight, before the frustration, before the, the decel, before the decline, make the change when you want to. These are five thoughts on things that will cost you. I'm hoping that you lean into them so you don't have to pay the price. All right, let's go back this month's episode with Erica the Boss Bosco. We're talking about leaning in to influence. All right, we are back here with Erica the Boss. Uh, we're talking about leaning into your influence. Yeah. I want to talk about this. Um, when, when you think about influence, I think about three levels of influence. Mm -hmm. Those that you lead up, those that are underneath you, yep. and then your peers. Mm -hmm. Most leaders, in my opinion, are good at two of the three. And every once in a while, you find some way it's like, wow. You are good at every level. Yeah. You are good at leading up. You are good. Your peers like you. It, this, this is, the I think, most of the time, the tough one. Yeah. Uh, yes. It, uh, the easiest one is leading down, yes. in my opinion. That's People love basic. you. They love being on your team. They yeah. love Because I think it's insecurity and it's lack of being developed. This is a, 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 it's a dark side to most leaders that the people underneath them adore them because they get their best. Mm. And then maybe up, you know, it, it's brown nose, you know, kind of being like a gets up, <laughs> kind of being like, pastor, I love you, or boss, you're the greatest, or wow, have you lost weight, or oh my, oh my gosh, your podcast is so great, yeah. whatever, leading up. And they neglect here. Mm -hmm. You know, their peers just yeah. don't. Why? Because there's no energy. There's yeah. no effort. They don't know how to connect. They don't know how to connect here. Yeah. So I always think I'm always looking for people and fascinated by leaders that can do all three. Yeah. That they have influence with those underneath them. They have influence with their peers mm. and they have influence with those above them. Yeah. I, I wonder what are the qualities that you would need to have? Let's talk about this. What, what makes someone be strong in all three facets of leadership? It's a great question. It really, is. Yeah. it really is such a big dilemma. Well, yes, and I, I think I've lived through all sorts of that of three levels. I think somebody that's um, secure mm. can do it all. Yep, truly. Like yeah, I think, totally I think a lot true. of leadership and influence has to do with your security. Yep. If you're someone that needs to yep. be needed, you're that's going it. to love your influence going down because they need you. Yep. Um, and on a peer level, it, I also think it requires um, sincerity, like yeah. authenticity. Yes. Like uh, your authority is in your authenticity yep. and your peers can see yep. if you're real or not because totally. they're on your playing field. Can't fake that. And I don't think, I don't think peers want to be led by you. They want to live life with you like your yeah. peers want to feel like we're doing this together but you're and not and i think you know most people have a problem with that because you hit the word needed yeah it, but they they understand um most leaders that are insecure go i have so much authority and weight and yeah. they love me and i've got Weird. such a say here but here i don't have that so why do i need to invest that because you need it like you need it, the community you need life yep. like yep. i think if you miss that like you're just going to live your whole life being in charge of people or being needed by your boss yep. and you just miss this whole middle yep. area of the influence, but also the relationships you could have yep. 
with the people that are your peers. That's it. I think part of leaning into your influence and being good at all three facets goes back to the simple thought of playing fair. Yeah. Like just play well with others. Yes. Like it's hard to be a great leader and have a lot of conflict. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, wow, they that's... play well with those underneath them, but they can't play well with their peers. Yeah. They always have an issue with peers or they always have an issue with authority. Mm-hmm. I think that's so bizarre. And then I think the way that we uh, we solve that is that word that you use is security. Mm-hmm. Because I, 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 I don't know what it is for me. I had to learn this. I, I felt really comfortable leading down. That was an, like, yeah. an obvious like... My youth, our team, you know, that was like so fun easy stuff. for me. It's a fun yeah. stuff. Um, but the next two, it took time mm-hmm. and lessons and maturation for me to go to win with my peers. Yeah. And my peers like me and my peers, you know, when I was started, it started out as a youth ministry in 19, 19 years old. Yeah. I would go to college and I would be done by 1230. And every day I'd leave San Dimas and drive to El Monte. And I would, you know, give my life to this youth ministry. Well, I, growing, I didn't care what my peers thought about me. Right. So my first six years of wow. ministry, really, I just didn't care. Like, yeah. I only cared about building this, serving mm-hmm. my city, reaching the young people, doing events, you know, preaching Wednesdays and Sundays. Like, that, that I just, it wasn't bad. I just was like, I don't care what you yeah. guys think. It's almost like you're unaware. I was unaware. Like, yeah. you guys can go to Santa Monica, Third Street. I'm trying to... Reach yeah. the youth of East LA. Yeah. So I, it took me a long time to get out of that and go like, oh, no, no, these relationships matter. matter. Then stepping into, I'll never forget the first book I wrote. Uh, it's a great thing to do, a I self-published book. genuinely think I have this book, like yeah. at home. You probably were an intern when I when I, I came was, out with yeah. this book. Yeah, I for sure have this book. Uh, it was called... Um, do you see what I yeah, see? Yeah, I was like trying to think of the name. The cover's like a little colorful. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah, unbelievable. <laughs> so this guy in the in the area we were in, in Federal Way, um, we were in Puyallup, but in Federal Way, uh, this pastor, Pastor Casey Street's son, Caleb, yep. calls me and says, hey, I just want to let you know, I saw you came out with a book, Do You See What I See? D- he says to me, did you know that Pastor Brian Houston from Hillsong <gasps> has, a, has a book out called The Church That I See? And this is what I said to him at the time. Oh, no. I said, bro, uh, who who cares? I go, I will never meet Pastor Brian. I'll, ne- <laughs> I'll never meet anyone from Hillsong. These are actual words. That came from you. That I thought. That's now it was like unbelievable. Yeah. Unbel- it, it, yeah. In high time, laughable. Like, ha- laughable. How could you think that? Yeah. But I genuinely was so at a true, place though. where I'm not going to. Yeah, you know, lead uh, leading up for me was not even something on my radar, wow. or like you know having friends or people in my mm-hmm. world like Pastor Brian. I had to through life and maturation go like, wow, I want to have you know friends that are yeah unbelievable. I'll never forget this one time. Wow, we're sitting around and um, this guy goes, this is years ago. He goes, I want you to uh, name the top seven most influential contacts in your phone. I remember sitting in this guy's living room being like, this is the weirdest <laughs> game I've ever played. Yeah. And the guy was like, okay, um, here's mine. And he goes, but here's who I have faith that one day I'll have these guys' phone numbers. I remember just thinking You're like, like, what? <laughs> like what planet are we, are we allowed to yeah, do that? Like, like, is, this fi- is this fine? Is this okay? Yeah. And I remember this, and I, but years later, wow. those names that this person was listing like, those are all my friends now. These are wow. all people that I know. And I, it wow. was a real moment of me going, wow, I think you have to learn to pivot mm. and go, I want to win at every level. Yes. What, great leaders. Wow. I think this is about great leaders. Great leaders want to l- win with everyone. Yeah. They don't want to win with a few. They don't want to win with who they already have. They have this obsession. I want to win them over. Yeah. I want to win with them. I want to win with them. And it's it's continu- It's You're big here. Great. I want to win. Yeah. You're, you're my peer. I want to win with you. I, it's, it's winning with people and going, I'm not satisfied mm. with my influence already. I believe I want to be an influence in your life as well. Yeah. And not writing people off of going like oh you're good oh you're big oh you're right. fine oh, i'll just lead these guys no it's, right. it's shallow right it's small, small thinking. thinking 
I'll, which leads me to this thought I want to talk about. How do you increase your influence? Mm. When I say increasing your influence, which again, I want to make sure we all the audience understands leadership is influence. So yeah, how do we increase this to me is a really fun to unpack. How do you increase influence? Mm. For me, it is always going back to if I want to increase my influence, I increase my yeah. character, yourself, capacity, my my um, competence. Mm-hmm. It never Hold starts on. out there. Exactly. It always starts in here. Mm-hmm. It is everything to do with the dynamics at play in my own life, in my heart. Wow. It the 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 easiest way to lose influence is to concentrate on your influence. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's like the fastest way <laughs> yeah. to lose influence so is weird. to be so into your press clippings. Yeah, yeah. And so drinking your own Kool-Aid. Yeah. The only way to increase influence is to, in my opinion, work on uh, your humility, mm-hmm. your values, the foundation of who you are, um, understanding your why, the why behind everything you do. Yeah. People really respect those that have figured out their why. Yep. And they sense it. They go, this guy is he's driven by something else. Mm-hmm. You know, like I love that about the shoe dog and reading that about Phil Knight and of him going like, you know, he was obsessed and driven by one thing in his early age, but in his latter age, he was like, I think I'm obsessed with helping universities yeah. and trying to solve cancer and Yep. driven by something else. Mm-hmm. You see that pivot with Kobe that it was like, I'm not driven to to win championships. Now what drives me, my why is investing in yeah. youth, investing in the young uh, yeah. you know, NBA stars and knowing your why. I think that increases, it like whew, yep. wildfire. Yep. What comes to your mind when I talk about how do you increase your influence? That was the biggest thing is you have to increase on the inside. Yeah. And you have to know where you're going. You have to have a, a, yes. a an idea of your influence, again, is not for yourself. Yep. So your why matters. I was yep. just yesterday, I was, somebody asked me like, what's a, what's a dream you have for the next uh, five years for your uh, personal career? Which is <laughs> yeah, the funniest yeah. question to me. Yeah. Um, because my career, yeah. quote unquote, if you're listening, I'm doing quotes, um, <laughs> is is the local church yep. for my personal sphere. Right. Um, so that's like a whole different um, right. environment. Right. And I, I was like, I actually have never thought about that question. Like right. I, I just know what I'm called to right. and whatever that means is what I'm going to lean into and right. it will just naturally evolve. Um, and part of following your influence also has to do and growing in it also has to do with following somebody else's mm. and not on their coattails, but hitching yourself to their wagon That's it. and saying, I'm with you. Yep. I'm a part of this. Yep. Your influence and your leadership doesn't get bigger when you're on an island. Man. It gets bigger when you're able to follow somebody. That's it. And that's the greatest lesson I think I've learned in my life yep. is that I, it's really not, if it's not about you, it can't be about you at all. Yep. Um, Obviously, your development is about you and yep. your character and sure. your person. Yep. But your influence is why would you want your small thing when you yeah. could be a part of a massive big thing? That's it. And people that can't have their influence with their peer and have their influence up, they stay low and that's they it. stay small. Comfortable. And that's, I think that's one of my biggest fears that I've had in life is I don't want to be a small person. Yep. Um, and I don't need to be the center of attention, yep. but I definitely don't want to be a part of a small thing. Yep. And that's my drive in that it keeps me um, awake mm. and it keeps me driven towards my why. It's like, great. I know that I want to be a part of the bigger thing. That's awesome. So I got to do the work on the inside yep. and then put the work in on the outside that's it. and just know where I'm going with that. So smart. Yeah. I think um, it is fascinating to watch people try to fight influence yeah like like, wow. like you watch people make decisions and they try and bash people that have influence mm-hmm. or they try and drag down people that have influence and i have just i've watched people make decisions to leave influence yeah and i always think Sad. i'm trying to partner with people that are inspiring and at the next level yeah and i'd rather 
you know, be on, you're always a part of a team. Yeah. Some of those teams are defined. A lot of those teams are undefined. Yes, exactly. But you are always a part of a team. Exactly. And I've just made a decision to be on a few teams Mm -hmm. that are undefined. They have no name. They have no mascot. They have no colors. But I'm on that team. And those teams have allowed me to have more influence I could ever have on my own. That's it. Could ever have from a church. Yeah. I could ever have from a pot. It's just like knowing who to hit your wagon to. Exactly. Knowing who to go, I'm with these guys for life. Yeah. That's not with and for everybody, but when you know that comes, don't fight against... I learned I learned this uh, many years ago watching a few people make decisions where it's like, you're trying to take... You're trying to go against what? Yeah. You you want to leave what? <laughs> you're 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 messing with your influence. Yeah, you, you're not going to touch theirs. No. One of my favorite lines. Uh, only Pastor Brian can say stuff like this. I'm not even going to use the line because I, it was said at a staff meeting. Someone told me about it, but I I just I love the that idea. That was a great lesson in discretion. By yeah, the that, way, yeah, yeah, because I don't know. Pause if, for if, that if, one. If that was great. Repeated, but but I I I I don't fight influence. No. Don't fight because. It influences a grace. It's from God. And yeah. so when you're trying to fight that, in my opinion, you're trying to fight what's God given. Right. So I just, you got to slow your oh, roll on that. Now, I do want to uh, cover one last thing in leaning into our influence and understanding the future there of your leadership and the stewardship. Don't despise small beginnings because mm. your le- influence might start small. You never know where it's going to go. You yeah. never know what could happen with this thing. So um, I want to talk and close with this, the abuse of influence. Yeah. Like when some somebody starts going like, it's about my influence, it's about what I can get, it's about my name and my reputation and me, you know, monetizing this and that. I think you have to be really careful as a leader because... If you're not careful it, and you're not taking care of yourself and self-care and really understand mm-hmm. your, your competence and your character and your chemistry and all the C's we walk through all the time, if you're not, what happens is you can very quickly abuse the platform and the voice and the reach that you have. Yeah. And the abuse to me is not just creasing somebody. The abuse to me is using it for you. Right. Seeing it yeah. as a means for you and what you can get out of it and how does it benefit you. I think you have to be careful because the toxic mindset to me has everything to do about self-indulgence mm-hmm. and 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 it being about, you know, my kingdom, my platform, my world, my my lane, my and it's a it's a tension there. Yeah. It, when I'm talking about leaning into influence, it's there's a tension because we're leaning into your gift yeah. and leaning into your grace and leaning into your future, and yet all the while at the same time dying to self. Yes. Dying to your name, your brand, your reputation. Yep. So how do you build a brand and die to your brand? How do you build a <laughs> reputation and yeah. die? Bet you, on yourself, but die to yourself. Yeah. yeah like what does that time, even at mean? The, at the same time. Yes. What in the world? Yes. How does because I think I love this thought. If you if you go too far in one extreme, yeah, like false humility, uh, just it, punch me in the face. This is the tension of leadership right here. Yes. So is it about you or is it about them? Is it about you know? It's like <laughs> is it, it's always in the middle. Yeah, and both. It's always and both. It's like you have to know what you need in order to serve who you're called to serve in any sphere. I think what really is important in leadership is motives and intentions. Yes. And the whole thing about motives and intentions, I usually judge other people off their actions, yep. but I judge myself off my intentions. Oh, that wasn't my intention. Oh, that right. wasn't my, I didn't mean to do that. I think I have to be really careful because ego is this monster yeah. pride is this disease and it is so easy to fall slip into the trap of abusing my influence mm. so that i can get what i want yeah i always get really careful of people that i weary of people that throw god cards around you yeah. know it's just like god told me god didn't god because yeah. i'm like ah there's just it doesn't feel 
sensitive. I was just going to say, there's there's a sensitivity Yeah. when you feel like the Holy Spirit has spoken to you or God's nudged you. Yeah. It's a very careful step. And don't you kind of always sense when it's God? When it's God, yeah. it's like this holy thing you're that like, you're like, I don't want to mess with that. Yeah. Other times you're like, huh? Mm-hmm. So yeah, I have to I have to be very careful and not to abuse yeah. the the great things God's given me because I I believe this you are so talented you are so gifted you are so intelligent you're so brilliant you can manipulate anything mm-hmm. and abuse it for your good mm-hmm. and you watch in this town a uh, stories coming to mind of someone that I know has abused their power time and time again to get what they want. Mm. And it's like all of that catch. And listen, there's always the influence out there versus the influence in here. Yeah. And in here, it's like the trusted circle, the people that really know, yeah. the people that know the behind the scenes. And if you can't win with them, you're not you're winning. Yeah. You really aren't. Yeah. You're not winning. This is where it all starts. It starts with me and my conscience. Then it starts with this small team that really knows behind the curtain. Yeah. Behind the curtain, what's being said. Yeah. Behind the curtain, is there morale and unity there? That for me is the biggest challenge of leadership. Totally. Out That's there, it right it's there. It's like, I can fool everybody out there. That's a shell. That's like, you, you've seen a highlight reel. Yeah. It's a highlight reel. But in here where the kitchen is hot mm-hmm. and we're cooking. Yep. This is real, and I can't abuse my power here. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. Well, and I love that you even touched on in your top five on honesty. A half truth is still a lie. Yeah. You are you. It. You will earn your mistrust. Yeah. In the close influence behind the curtain. Yeah. When you're not honest with people, That's when it. if you're if you want to grow in your influence, but you're afraid of people being honest with you, or you're afraid to be honest with other people. Right. You're going. You're not going to go anywhere. That's it. And the the me monster, the ego. Yeah. The more you feed that, the sicker you become. Ooh. And you, that's it. It it, it feels and good everybody in the moment. Can see it. It's self gratifying, of course. It's our nature to be selfish, and have what we want. But at the end of the day, the great return is nothing. Yeah. It's empty. Totally. And it is sometimes empty. you have to learn that the hard way. Yeah, you have to learn that the hard way. I think you can always recover you from to. it. It's never, it's never, you're never too far gone. If, no. If you're listening, mm-hmm. you're like, man, I feel like I've abused power and I've abused people that are with me. And uh, abuse is a kind of an aggressive word. Maybe, you know, you, you've made it more about you. I always think one of my favorite lines is today is the first day of the rest of your life. Yeah. Start new. Exactly. Start fresh. Yep. Start changing. People can people can notice change. Wow, you've changed. Yes. You're softer, you're kinder, you're you're more gentle, you're more gracious, you're less. Yeah. <laughs> we're <laughs> we're with somebody right now that's really, you know, changing before our very eyes. And someone the other day was commenting they were at this restaurant and this guy, one of his friends goes to him, "Man, you've changed. The old you would never act like this." And the guy was like, wow, was, was I bad before? He's like, yeah, you're just nicer now. Yeah. You know, and it's people like notice, compliment. people notice. Yeah. And so I think, I love what we're talking about today because we're talking about leadership, lean in, mm-hmm. lean into you and what God is doing there. And you watch the compound of consistency and the ripple effect of small, meaningful decisions yep. can have such a massive, massive impact. Leadership, lean in. We love you. We'll see you next time.